With watching and dreaming just around the corner, I felt like making a video I've been wanting to make for a while. I actually wanted to make more of a long-form video for a while in general, so it's really, really cool to start with the Owl House. Pretty much been not doing that kind of video and doing other things, and this is a really neat step to take. But the Owl House is a pretty special show for me. I have been pretty much obsessed with the show for the last three quarters of a year. It doesn't sound like a lot of time since I know it started almost three years ago. I'm trying to really key in on that word. Obsessed. I don't think a day has really gone by since King's Tide that I haven't thought about this show in some capacity. I've been thinking about how it will end constantly and predicting and worrying about the characters and relating it to my reality and, oh, that's how that happens, that's how this happens, oh. Yeah, obsessed. I started watching The Owl House around the series finale of season two due to the online presence. I originally fell into it a bit earlier because of a video that I saw uh, analyzing the Lumini relationship, and then I just dived into a internet rabbit hole of Lumini moments, which is, is probably a big reason most of us watch this show, don't judge me. <laughs> that was around the time of Through the Looking Glass Runes. From then on, I didn't really pay much attention to the show because, in all honesty, I didn't really have a good way to watch it. But around the time of the Amphibia series finale, I was watching uh, episode breakdowns by The Round Table on how that show was ending, which it ended pretty cool and it still gets to me. But The Owl House was also there and I started watching those episode breakdowns because it was summer and I had too much time on my hands. This was also around the time of Hollow Mind, which is when the show really started going. It was already going in, after season, the end of season one, but it really, like, gets a kick in its pants after the end, after Hollow Mind. It is cool. <laughs> but, yeah, I was pretty much doing that after Clouds on the Horizon, where I was pretty much just watching episode breakdowns and half wondering about how the show was in. Then King's Tide came out, and I was like, I'm going to avoid these spoilers because I wanted to see how it ended for myself versus someone telling me this is how it ends. Much less exciting. The internet is both an amazing and horrible place for discovering things because unless you know in advance things are coming, you never find out about them unless you're getting spoiled about them. <laughs> this is what killed my first Hollow Knight playthrough and half the shows I've ever watched because unless you're discovering it late in the runtime... Or sorry, I mean, early in the runtime, you're kind of not having a good time watching it because it's like that happens and that happens and that happens and that happens. Just much, much less fun. But yeah, after King's Tide, my sister and I started like really watching the show like going through it. And it was really cool <laughs> discovering new stuff that I hadn't seen before because I'd been mostly spoiled on most of it. Again, super cool discovering that stuff. A big one I remember is uh, in Eclipse Lake, where they were talking about how da more dangerous minecart chases are than they seem in video games. It's kind of, a, it's just a joke, but I, it's so cool discovering that new stuff in something you thought you already knew. And it's, I wish I could still do that. But at one point, my sister went off on vacation, and for some reason, I just ended up watching Yesterday's Lie up to King's Tide in one night. I think I was up until two in the morning going, so good, I want more, I want more. <laughs> and obviously the next day I was kind of an emotional wreck and tired. But kind of from that point on, I just started calling Owl House my favorite show because it was, I was hooked so hard. I was incredibly excited for Thanks to Them and for the future. Those season three episodes, the build-up to them was so incredible. I mean, after Halloween, if you ask me what date I was most looking forward to, I would say New Year's Day. Because that's what I thought for the future was coming out. It wasn't. <laughs> it was came out January 21st. But I was still looking forward to it. <laughs> I watched those episodes... And I loved them. They were so, so cool. They're amazing episodes of animation of, and of television. They are, they're art. That applies to the entire series. There really isn't a bad episode in the bunch. Maybe Once Upon a Swap, but that isn't even that bad. 
The series is just overall amazing, and it is so cool that so many other people think that. Between my sister and the other people I've talked to who also love this show, I have had so much positive interaction. And this amazing online community is here too, always, you know, making me happy with the amazing things they do with relation to it. The comics that I see, mainly Mooring Marks, those are amazing. The analysis of stuff that I know, the amazing, amazing fan art. Look at this! This is amazing! I wish I could credit whoever created this, because it is the coolest picture I think I have ever seen. <laughs> this online community is one of the few that I've ever really interacted with. Just, it has really been nothing but joy bringing. Sometimes I wonder what they're thinking. <laughs> um, but that's part of the fun. It's fun wondering, why would you even bring up that this could all be a dream? It's not. <laughs> It confuses me, but that absurdity can still bring me joy and make me worry a great deal. This silly little show has made me laugh, scream, and wonder what the heck just happened more times than I would like to admit. I absolutely love this show, and I am so sorry that it's leaving. I'm even more sorry that Disney is filled with idiots, and they made us lose out on about seven hours of this show. I would be mad about that for the rest of my life, but... We move on. I'm also going to miss those times in between episodes. Because even though we always like, I wish it would come out sooner, I kind of wish it wouldn't. I love this time in between going, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And just the constant ability to think about what's going to happen and not knowing. We want to know, but the not knowing's fun too. Right now, I just kind of want to freeze this current time period in like a bubble and kind of like save it. I'm really looking forward to this, but and it'll be sad not having anything else to look forward to for this. I know other great shows are going to come along, and some already have, but I get the feeling this is one of those shows I'm always going to remember and come back to. This is this is the something I'll actually get nostalgia for. I know no one's actually going to ever see this video. But if anyone actually ever does, thank you for watching and listening to me gush. And if anyone ever, ever actually worked on the show comes across this, thank you so, so, so much for what you've done. I love this. And I am so happy you decided to make this show or work on it or do anything in relation to it. It's amazing. I could gush for another 20 minutes, but I'm going to hold my tongue. I know we're all waiting for Dana Terrace to break our hearts on April 8th, but have fun watching and dreaming. <laughs>